Hi, gorgeous brothers and sisters um, in Jesus and lovely children in Jesus. I'm here um, to read you the meeting of Jesus part two. Jesus, so when we got, um, last name we got surprised to see Jesus, but how did we get her? Jesus looking at her over to the rock smiled and said gently, It's okay, sweetheart, come out. Don't be afraid, for I, Jesus, sent you here for a purpose. With that name, he excitedly ran up from the rock with such a huge smile and gave Jesus a big hug, who hugged her warmly back. Jesus gently requested, Go and bring your brother Daniel to me, because I have specifically chosen him to fulfil this part of scripture. Naomi and Murphy ran back to Daniel, and Jade happily shouted, You never guess what? We have just met Jesus, Peter, James and John, and his other disciples. Well, they are really around somewhere in the crowd. Really? Daniel and Jade screeched together in great excitement. Yes, he wants to specifically use Daniel for his purpose. So the two twin, so the two sisters gave Daniel their five loaves of bread and pushed him in his wheelchair to meet Jesus. Andrew spoke up. Andrew, the disciple, spoke up, saying, "Here's a boy with two fish and." and five loaves. Jesus gave Daniel a loving look and gently touched his head, smiling. I am so proud of you. Your faith is so great, and now I will use you greatly, and you will go down in history as the boy who gave Jesus me his two fish and two loaves. Jesus then hugged Daniel, and Daniel handed the food over. Jesus then said, um, Tell the people to sit down. Jesus looked up towards heaven and gave thanks to his father, God, for his provision. And he multiplied the food. He then distributed it to all those people who were sitting down in the grass. The people had a great feast, all tummies full, and many of the sick were healed by Jesus. Jesus told his disciples to gather the leftovers. Twelve baskets were full. He handed one of the baskets to the children, saying, Now go back home. They shared this basket with your family and church members. The next thing they knew was that they were back home in their own town. Paul and their parents were standing in front of them. Have you been worried about us? Asked, asked Jade. Morgan replied, What do you mean, sweetheart? You literally only came out two minutes ago. And we followed you to take a look for ourselves. What was going on? Naomi replied, But we were gone for a whole hour. You silly sausage, you're joking with us, Tom replied in a friendly and humorous way. Daniel smiled, smiled. Look what Jesus gave us. We went into a time machine and met Jesus. I'm sure you wish you did, Morgan replied, smiling. Tom asked, but children, where did you get really get your basket of bread from? Jesus, replied Daniel, I got it from Jesus. Tom replied, OK, answer me straight. No joking now, Tom smiled. Paul spoke up. The children got it from me. I gave them the bread and they told me that they were going to pretend that the bread was given to them from Jesus after going into a time machine to meet him. But Paul, of course, was lying as he did not want the children to spread the news that he was making a time machine in case people would think he was crazy. He also wanted the children to stop talking about Jesus. Tom and Morgan believed and thanked Paul, and the children spoke no more about their meeting with Jesus, in fear of not being believed. However, it came to Sunday after the church service. There was a bring and share lunch at their church. Tom and Morgan took the basket full of bread to share, and they could not believe it as Tanya and Katrina, who were also wheelchair-bound, took a mouthful of the bread, miraculously jumped out of their wheelchairs and were healed. Also, other people were healed from skin problems, deafness, and even a blind lady was healed by the bread. Past it, Patrick couldn't believe his eyes. He started praising God, shouting, Hallelujah! Praise God! Angels are eating the bread with us! And the whole church broke up in praise. In the meantime, Morgan made her way back to the back of the church and pulled out a children's Bible. She dropped it by accident. 
It fell open on the page of the story of the boy sharing his two fishes and five loaves. She was shocked as she saw a picture of the boy looking exactly like Daniel. Tom was walking behind her. What's up, my dear? Tom asked. Nothing, Morgan snapped as she quickly placed the book back in the shelf. She put it in the back of her mind as to not think of herself as crazy. Later that night, Tom asked her again. Beloved, what happened in that room back in church? You know you can tell me anything. She let it out. I think my mind is going crazy. I saw Daniel in the children's book, the book and the, where the story of the boy with the two fishes and the five loaves. Tom gently replied, it's okay, sweetheart. You're not going crazy. You're just stressed out with Daniel's illness. Morgan cried her eyes out. God healed all those people in church today. Why not our sweet baby boy? Tom hugged her and replied gently. Please don't doubt God, beloved. I believe in his time and he will. And you know, it was not Daniel you saw, but just a drawing of a boy. Anyway, why would Jesus choose Daniel out of all the boys he could have picked in history? Morgan replied. And why not Daniel? Jesus has to use someone. In fact, he uses all of us in different ways. Tom replied, yeah, that's true, my dear. A week had passed and the children kept all these things in their heart and mind. Just over a week later, that Monday morning, Daniel was feeling really poorly and all the three kids had permission to go for a walk still by their parents in the fresh air. Jay suggested, let's go and sneak in Paul's garage and go for another adventure in that time machine to meet Jesus again. Yes, please, Naomi replied. Daniel said, please. Oh, OK, agreed Naomi. So, of the three siblings, and Murphy, their dog, went inside of the Paul's garage into his time machine. Again, they were greeted by the angel. He said, now I am going to take you back earlier in the life of Jesus' missionary ministry than I did before. I want you to meet a very special little girl called Tapithia. The three siblings found themselves by the side of the huge lake. They saw a man falling at Jesus' feet, who was crying his eyes out, saying, My daughter's dying. Please come and heal her. The three siblings looked at each other, saying, Oh no, poor little girl together. A huge crowd followed around Jesus, but somehow Naomi, Jade and Daniel managed to push their way through the crowd, with Daniel <coughs> pushing along, being pushed along in his wheelchair. On the way, they witnessed a woman touched by Jesus and him healing her. He dealt with her so kindly and lovingly. Some people came out of, of the weeping man's house saying, Your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Naomi said, sternly, how rude and what a very unsympathetic thing to say. A Pharisee was standing next to the children and asked, how old are you? Naomi replied, I am 12 years old and my little brother and sister is only eight. The Pharisee replied, well then, you are, not, you are only a child and you don't have no anything, snapped the Pharisee. And you also have broken a Jewish rule, God's rule. You forgot to wash your hands before you ate that piece of bread that you're eating in your hands. Naomi cried. Jesus saw what happened and Jesus came over to hug her saying, In all that Pharisee sweetheart, their hearts are far from God, even with all their rules. But your heart, however, is very pure. Jesus then turned to the Pharisee saying, be gone with you. How dare you upset one of my little lambs? You fraud. He then turned to her two siblings, smiling. It is nice to see you again. They said, smiling back at Jesus. It's nice to see you too, Jesus. He then turned back to the weeping man, Jairus. Don't be afraid, just believe. Oh, he is so lovely, said Jade. Shh, a minute, sweet little sister. Let's take a look through his 
this man's house window and see what Jesus does. Jesus only let Peter, James and John go into Jairus' house with him. He walked over to the little girl, took her by the hand, saying, Little girl, get up. The little girl rose up and was walking around smiling. In no time she gave Jesus a big hug to thank him. Jesus told her parents to give her something to eat. They gave her some grapes and, and she took them outside to share with Naomi, Daniel and Jade. They played happily together and talked about how wonderful Jesus was. The little girl also loved Murphy, their dog, and, and she stroked him. Tabithia, the little girl, smiled. If Jesus healed that lady you saw today and me, he was going to heal you too, Daniel. With that, the children found themselves back home. They were so happy after that encounter and interacting with that the tabby of that little girl and encouraging and her encouraging words even Murphy the dog seemed happy and they all just kept singing praises to God all week long. A week later they decided to go back into Paul's time machine. This time Paul spotted the children and was very annoyed with them trying to drag them out but he could not. Instead Paul found himself with the other children and their dog surrounded by many children. Paul screamed, oh no, where am I? I really don't like children. But more and more children were coming from all ages, from little babies to toddlers, to 10 year olds and 11 year olds, to teenagers and even some young adults. But they all seemed very eager to meet Jesus. And I'm gonna call it off here. And I'm going to do a part three. God bless you all.